Ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board. Nervous flyers should leave the aircraft now. The exits are here and here. In the event of anxiety, pull the mask towards you and breathe easily. I'm going to talk about aviation, navigation, and communication, which are the basic mantras of flying taught to pilots on their first day in school. Aviate, fly the plane first, navigate next, then communicate. Ignore everything else. Why do I tell you that? Well, the next slide, when it pops up, will show you. This is what happens when everything goes wrong. June 1972, this aircraft fell out of the sky a few seconds after leaving Heathrow. A domineering senior pilot crashed an otherwise perfectly flight-capable airplane. Later that year, exactly the same in Florida, a five-cent light bulb and a domineering senior pilot led to the loss of a brand new TriStar owned by Easton. Very disturbing accidents, domineering senior pilot as the common theme. Let's run that forward now and look at what happens in the modern day. Many of you will be familiar, June 2009, a perfectly airworthy aircraft fell out of the air because of basic flying skill failures. A Little bit of bad weather, a little bit of icing, the pilot didn't know what to do. The same month in New York, in Buffalo, aircraft icing, airworthy, pilots didn't know what to do. In both circumstances, basic, basic aviation skills fail to deliver what we would expect. And yet we have more and safer flights. Look at these graphs. More and more flying, the bottom graph, fewer and fewer accidents. We are getting safer in the traveling public. But, but something is odd, something is very wrong. We look at accidents under what's called the Swiss cheese model that says that accidents don't happen because of one cause, they happen usually because of five, often a very, very minor, minor mechanical failure, lots of other reasons that all line up to cause an accident. And aviation safety is improving, but the rate of improvement has slowed. More worryingly, lack of control, loss of control accidents now are the overriding cause. All other causes are diminishing. And what are the differences with medicine? Well, aviation is headline news. Lots of killed publicly as opposed to one privately. Black boxes, voice and data are uniform. Legal investigative systems, no fault reporting culture, all standard, but big recruitment changes since 1972. Let's translate that into healthcare. My experience of a young fit patient in a prime hospital in this country drowned with 10 liters of fluid because of slavish adherence to protocols for low urine output. Poor hands-on skills. What does that mean in the cockpit environment? This is what a cockpit looked like in the 1970s. Lots of round gauges, lots of levers, what we call steam gauges. This was the environment in which pilots of the 1970s worked. If we move that forward, though, you'll see things have changed with glass screens. And in fact, if you look carefully, this Airbus doesn't even have a yoke. It has an electronic joystick, just like a games console. If we look at what that means now in a modern operating theater, a modern operating theater looks not unlike that in the 1970s. This is an a, a, a old environment, the sort of environment I started to train in in the 80s with lots of bits of pieces that you twiddled. Moving forward now, it's a wholly different environment. You've got lots of screens, lots of information, lots and lots of data overload. And so the role of the clinician has very much changed. It's become very much a monitoring and observational role. More and more automation, that's the current theme. And if you look at um, automation, here's one example, the pulse oximeter, which the physiology of which most doctors do not understand, and they place, place blind faith, and I would say excessive trust, in the numbers that come from it. I've seen plenty of patients for whom the numbers say all is well, but the patient is not. Aviation stats say that steam cockpits may actually be safer than glass, but doctors are used to flying the machine guided by protocols and checklists. This is, I think, a rather interesting, and I'd argue, disturbing move. So this complex and difficult balance, has the pendulum swung too far? Have we lost the balance between art and science, between the subjective um, and the artistic? It's uh, an interesting thing that the, the Hippocratic Oath, I think, has been, in some ways, lost in the 21st century. So have our doctors really forgotten this mantra that pilots are taught about aviation? I think that they've become rather fixated on protocols, they've fixated on navigation, even if sometimes those protocols are wrong. And the implications, how and who we recruit. Certainly big changes came out of 72. The big change was pilots became a lot less bright, at least academically. So what is that balance now? 
between intelligence and ability.